Hello, this is going to be a complete walkthrough on how to use trigger actions on specific changes to specific fields in Power Automate. So we're gonna use this to log the completed date when a task status changes to complete and also to set the percentage complete field. You could tack on an email notification or a Teams notification onto this flow as well. So I wanna point out that this ability to trigger on and get specific changes for items is a feature of lists in Microsoft 365, also known as SharePoint lists. Other connectors have on modified triggers, but SharePoint is special in that you can find out exactly what changed when an item is modified without a monumental amount of effort. So this data source that we're working with is not Planner. It looks a lot like Planner, but it is a Microsoft list. This is from a prior video in the series. So if you would like to create one, the link is in the video description. So let's get started. I am going to open up Power Automate. So that's in the app launcher here under Power Automate. So in Power Automate, we're going to click on Create and choose Automated Cloud Flow. So these are the ones that are triggered by something happening. We're going to call this when I, and then choose the trigger. So we're going to want to use when an item is created or modified and then click create. So we're going to use the new UI today because I need to get with the times. We're going to deal with it. So you'll notice right away that I have an error right off the bat. That's cool. All right, so it wants a site address for our SharePoint site. So just select your site from the list. If you open this up and it has no sites in it, that means that your connection hasn't been set up yet. So there's an option down at the bottom here that shows your connection. I'm going to select my demo site and I'm going to use the list that we created in the last video, which was this launch a new restaurant. And we have this option to specify how often we want to check for this activity trigger. Defaults to three minutes, that's fine. What that means is when somebody marks something as complete, it could take up to three minutes for it to set the completed date field. When you start tuning this down to a very short amount of time, it just uses more resources. It's the only difference. So I'm just gonna leave it on three minutes. You have an option here under settings to set a trigger condition. So a trigger condition is something where you can set basically a filter on it so that the flow only triggers under specific conditions. And that can also keep your flow from running more than it should. So it saves resources. We're going to go through that at the end because it's optional here. We don't actually need it, but it is nice to have. For now, I'm going to leave it alone. So our first action that we need to do here is we need to get the changes that happened to this item. So this is the one that is SharePoint specific and I like it a lot. Dataverse doesn't have anything like this. So we're gonna search for get changes. This one here, get changes for an item or file properties only. And we need to select our site again, our list, and then the ID. So when you click into this field, you get a little lightning bolt option. So click that and then just pull in the ID from the trigger. And then we need to set the since value. So this is something that you pull from the dynamic content cards. If I search in here for the word trigger, I have a trigger window start token and a trigger, trigger window end token. So I'm gonna select the trigger start for the since. And then if I go under advanced parameters and click on show all, there is a until. So this is where the trigger window end goes. So lightning bolt again, search for trigger and set the end token. So this is gonna be what we use to tell what changed about the item so that we can trigger different actions on different things changing. Now what I can do is add another action here and choose the control option and condition. So we want some things to happen, but only when certain things are true. So if I click into this first field here and use the lightning bolt, if you click on see more next to this get changes here to see all of the options, we have all of these has column changed options. So this is where you can see whether a specific thing changed or not. So for us, what we want to do is use has column changed task status. That's going to tell us if the status has changed and we're going to say is that equal to true and then add a second condition because we only want this to be when the task has been completed not when it's changed to in progress so we're going to add a row and leave it on and so it's checking both and then in here if i search for the word status which is the name of our field so here what we want to use is the task status value not task status task status value that's the actual text value in the field we're going to check and see if that's equal to complete make sure your language here matches exactly what your status options were and i like to change the name of this to be more specific than condition 
So we're going to call it when status changes to complete. It just makes this easier to read. Under the true branch here, we're going to add an action for updates an item. So if I search for update item, there it is, SharePoint update item. So we're going to update the item that changed. And I want to point out here that you can use this get changes to an item with the parallel branch to check multiple things when something changes. Okay, so if you want to say, see if the bucket changed, you can just add parallel branch here and put another condition in that branch. So choose our site again and our list again. And this can be kind of easy to like accidentally select the wrong thing. So if you want to, you could put these values into either environment variables or flow variables. So put your ID in here. And here's the other thing that really confuses me about the modern flow experience. It hides all of the parameters that aren't required in this default view. So you need to click show all to see all your fields here. The ones that we want to set aren't required, so they're not showing up. So click show all. I want to take a second to point out what's going on here with the choice fields. So choice fields from SharePoint, if you have a default value being set, Power Automate tries to reset that same default value every time it updates the item. I don't know why it has this behavior, but it's always been like this. So it's trying to go and set our completed status to not started here, and we really don't want that. So we're just going to take out the values that are in there by default and set it to a custom value and use the dynamic content card for the status value. That'll set it back to the same thing. You can also try removing this, but it's a required field. Historically, Power Automate has really not liked it when you tried to not update required fields when they run, so I'm going to leave it. All right, so for our percentage complete, this is for completed tasks, so I want it to set the percentage complete to 100%. That is one in SharePoint language, not 100. It's one. Then the priority is doing the same thing, so it's trying to set it to whatever the default priority was. I'm going to just custom value set it to the real priority value, and then set our completed date time. So this, if we click on the FX to do an expression, what we want to use here is the current date time. In Power Automate, that's UTC now. And if I start typing, I can just select it and it'll insert it. So UTC now is universal time. You might be thinking to yourself, but I want it to be in my current time zone. The thing is, is that SharePoint likes UTC. So it's going to take whatever your UTC value is and convert it to whatever the time zone of the current user is who's looking at the task. So you don't need to worry about time zones here. So click add to insert your UTC now and then just review the rest of your fields to make sure it's not doing anything weird. Okay, this looks good. So I'm going to save this. So let's test our flow because that's always a good idea, right? We want to make sure that it's working. I'm going to click on the test button up here and choose manually and save and test. So what this is going to do is it's going to wait for whatever action we have for the item modification to run. So if I go back to our list and set one of these things to complete, it might take a minute or two for this to update here because it's only checking once every couple minutes, right? Because that was that setting we set at the beginning when we were setting up our flow. So give it some time. All right, so our flow ran successfully. Let's see what happened. So if I click on this part of the flow, the condition, it shows me the expression results. So our condition evaluated to true because I did change that value to complete. And then it performed some action. So it updated the item. So let's go look at our list. And I do need to refresh this page in this particular view. So it was this task right here. It has set the completed date time. That is my current date and time. So that's right. And the percentage complete is set to 100. While you're testing, you probably want to test it on other changes to the item too. So try changing one of the dates and the task status and make sure that it is not setting a completed date for those items. Better safe than sorry, right? So let's talk for a second about trigger conditions. So if you remember when I was up here in the trigger under settings, we have an option for trigger conditions. Let me go into edit mode here. So what we can do with this is only trigger this flow when our task status is complete. So that's not going to look at the changes. It's just going to say this item was modified. The status is complete. Then it will run. 
So it's not going to be triggering when somebody changes a date field or anything like that. It just makes the trigger happen less often. So it uses less resources to go through and check those things every single time a change is made. So if we want to use this, we can. This is considered best practice, particularly for things that trigger on modified. So in here we can do at equals parentheses trigger body open close parentheses question mark where bracket and the name of our status field so the thing to point out here is that while it's in single quotes it doesn't want your field name here it wants the backend field name from SharePoint. So to get that, you go into the gear menu in Microsoft lists and then go to list settings and then click on the field that you're wanting to check. So for us, that's our task status. And the backend field name is going to be at the very end of the URL in the address bar. So it says field equals and then task status, all one word. If you have special characters in your field name, like a question mark or anything like that, it's going to have some numbers in it. That's normal. Just copy whatever's after this equals sign, field equals, and then paste that into your square brackets inside single quotes. Then close the square bracket, question mark, square bracket, single quote, value with uppercase V, single quotes, close bracket, comma, and then enter what you want it to look for. So for me, that is the word complete in single quotes. Go and close your parentheses. So now this is only going to trigger if I save and test it if the item is both modified and the current value of the status is complete. This is really useful for avoiding infinite loops in your Power Automate flows. If I wanted to have this send an email notification, that a task has been completed, I could do that. You can add email actions in here. You can also do Teams actions. So let me just show you. So that'd be post message and chat or channel. Posting is the Flowbot is the easiest way to send messages in Power Automate with Teams. Well, likewise, you want the chat with Flowbot here if you want the less assembly required option. Alternately, the email. So this email is gonna send a generic email from a generic Microsoft account. This send an email V2 is gonna send an email with whatever connection that the current flow is telling it to use. So by default, it's gonna come from your account. You can use this to make your automated emails look more like they're coming from a person if you want to. You can also send with a shared mailbox with this technique. I have a video on that in my channel. Other things you might want to do with Power Automate are to send notifications to remind people to complete tasks. So X number of days before the due date, send an email, that kind of thing. Those are going to be scheduled flows, not triggered on any particular thing. That'll probably be a separate video, but I also have a blog post about how to do the reminder notifications. So I'll put that in the video description since I don't have a video for it yet. All right, so next up is going to be creating the reporting on our task data in Power BI. So we're gonna go through two techniques, one using the kind of built-in prefab reporting in the integration with Microsoft Lists and Power BI, and another version where we do it from scratch because we can go further with that. So if you wanna know when that comes out, feel free to subscribe. I also started an email newsletter, so if you want to be notified by email, the link is in the video description. That will let you know when new videos come out and also will have news and updates about what's going on in Power Platform, Planner, SharePoint, that kind of thing, so that you don't have to scrounge the internet looking for news on Power Platform. Platform. All right. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.